And there you have it so far. Five, four, and three of the greatest draft busts of all time. All Browns. Uh, finally, we broke the, the trend yeah, with the Jamarcus Russell and the, the Raiders. Curse has been broken. Uh, and we're going to reveal the number one NFL draft bust of all time, according to our analysts, Thursday on The Sweat. Yep. Must Thur- watch television. Thursday is the day as well that the first round of this year's NFL draft will be held. We're not doing it tomorrow no because doubt. tomorrow we have the whole like draft special here. We're going to have our uh, guys panel right. of eight analysts. It's going to be great. Kind of rip through the whole uh, 32 first I round I won't be picks. here, but it'll be great. I know. We'll be thinking about you. Um, She'll be grinding hard, you know, Okay. pushing right. that child out. Uh, I'm okay. Let's bring our NFL panel in. We have DraftKings contributors Jeff Oreck and Pierce Dietrich. Fellas, <laughs> it's draft week like we've been talking about. We're going to take a look at past drafts based on our top bust countdown. So earlier in the show, we looked at Trent Richardson as the number three bust. Now, <laughs> we don't have to go too deep into it because we've beaten up on the Browns enough over the course of the countdown. It's not our fault. It can't say they don't deserve it. But uh, despite Richardson's struggles in the NFL, teams did not stop picking running backs in the top five. So since Richardson's 2012 draft, Ezekiel Elliott in 2016, Leonard Fournette 2017, Saquon Barkley 2018 were all top five picks. Now those are big names, right? Uh, But were they worth being drafted that high? Like, what do we think here, Pierce? I don't think they're worth being drafted out. It's not their fault. It's not necessarily that they're busts. It's just that the league has changed so much in the last 20 years. It's a passing league. They've changed the rules, pass interference. You get away with basically everything for a receiver. You can't touch the receivers. It's a passing league. And so it really doesn't make any sense to pay up for a running back when they have minimal value. It's really just our own expectations. We still see the NFL the way it used to be, where running backs in the 90s carried the league it's just it's not the case anymore and yet we still hold these running backs that standard and so we consider them busts if we really want to look at busts then you got to go back to the 90s when you actually could run the ball you look at like guys out of Penn State like Kajana Carter and Curtis Enos that was a running era and those guys couldn't get the job done Lawrence Phillips Tim Bianca Batuka they were all drafted ahead of Eddie George those guys are real busts the guys in this era I don't I don't give them that much of a hard time. I don't even give Trent Richardson that much of a hard time. It's just it's a passing league. Uh Jeff, what do we think? Trent Richardson was pretty bad. But um, you know, Pierce does actually make a good point. Like, these running backs aren't bad running backs. Uh, we saw Leonard Fournette just, you know, kind of carry the the Tampa Bay offense to a Super Bowl. They they're they're capable. It's just the bust is the team is the team. It's the general manager is the bust because he's taking these running backs in places where nobody should be taking running backs because as Pierce alluded to, it's a passing league now. Why on earth would you take some of these guys? Like would be before Patrick Mahomes, even considering a running back, you should be loading up at, at, uh, at quarterback, even if you already have an established one because they're cheap, you can get upside, you could then trade your veteran for draft picks. Teams just don't think like that. The bust is at the GM position because you should never be taking a running back that high ever in today's league. And I think teams maybe slowly have figured it out, but you don't have to go back very far. I mean, 2018, Saquon Barkley. I mean, just looking at some of the names that have gone after him, Josh Allen, uh, you know, I, I mean, Minka Fitzpatrick, even just a, like a great defensive player. Derwin James, Jar- I mean, they, there's just so many names that are better and better assets for NFL teams than Saquon Barkley. All right, so a lot of people think that the, many of the veteran, veteran quarterbacks still available right now are actually going to be helped by what is perceived to be a pretty weak quarterback class. So as we go back to our number two bust, Marcus Russell here, like aside from him, that 2007 quarterback draft class here, I'm reading it, featuring names, Brady Quinn, Kevin Cole, Drew Stanton, the quarterbacks from that class made a combined 139 starts, the fewest by a draft class since 1996. Could we see something similar? Could we be in danger of seeing something like that this year, Jeff? Are you dragging the good name of Kevin Kolb down, Indeed down I am. the street, Emerson? I'll say, I'll, I'll defend Kolb a little bit. He actually won a starting job and kind of just got knocked out of the league because of, I believe, concussion issues. But you're right. It, it was a weak draft class. And I think that there's that the problem with this year's draft class is there's no, like, there's no sure thing. Like, there, if Malik Willis doesn't work out well, then we go down the road, like Desmond Ritter. What if Desmond Ritter just turns into, like, an average, like, maybe a backup or just, like, a really low-end starter? Well, then we're looking at, like, what, Sam Howell to maybe work out? I like the the ability of Sam Howell, and he's got a big arm and a little bit of Josh Allen traits about him, but 
if he doesn't work out either, I mean, like, there's no sure thing here. So some of these guys have some decent upside, but I don't know if the upside is on par with what we've seen. I think there is a very good chance that a lot of these guys could just be like, you know, eight games and it's like, okay, we've seen enough, kid. We're going to, you know, sit you on the bench and probably draft another quarterback. So I think there is a lot of bust potential here. I don't know if it'll be quite as bad as that draft class. I think that you you will see at least like a guy like Malik Willis get a real shot for a couple years and probably put in some time, potentially a guy like Ritter too. But yeah, um, you know, it, it, like I said, if Willis especially doesn't work out, who's trending as the number one pick, um, th- this draft class could be uh, very forgettable. Pierce, how do you view this year's quarterback draft class? Talent-wise, there are some concerns, and we could have, uh, you know, a repeat of that draft class that floundered. But that's really only half the story. A lot of it comes down to what system do they end up, uh, what coaching staff, what weapons are they surrounded by. Unfortunately, a lot of times the high-end draft picks are surrounded by bad teams and they don't produce. But I wouldn't be surprised to see one of the uh, lower-rated quarterbacks who falls to the second round end up in a pretty good team with a pretty good system and actually end up being one of the better draft picks and saving this draft class. So I don't have high hopes for some of these top picks, but maybe a guy like uh, Matt Corral who who could end up, you know, in Seattle with some good receivers, good coaching staff, a decent system. That's where I would keep my eye on. The guys that fall to the second round that end up in a preferred situation. All right, let's end by taking a look at this year's draft for the Las Vegas Raiders. So we did this with Cleveland yesterday, but on the DraftKings Sportsbook, you can bet on the position of the Raiders' first drafted player. They don't have a first-round pick, but defensive back is the favorite at plus 155, followed by offensive lineman at plus 225. So, Pierce, which direction do you think the Raiders are going to go? I would go with offensive line. They've got an offensive-minded head coach, and you look at that offense – They've got all the weapons they need. They've got the quarterback. They've got the premier wide receiver. They've got a prospect wide receiver. They've got a stud tight end. They've got a running back. They've got everything. They could just use a little bit more depth in the offensive line. Uh, With only a second-round pick, you really can't add any great positions. You can just build depth. And I would, you know, go with the offensive line and improve all those other positions. All right, Jeff, what do we think? Yeah, I, I mean, I, you can pretty much – the nice thing about the Raiders, if you're betting them this year, is that I think you can pretty much cross off, like, those skill positions. I, I just don't see them wasting their their first pick, just because they're not wasting necessarily, but just because they, they have so many needs on O-line and defensive back. Defensive back is actually where I would lean. I think plus 150. The depth of defensive back this year is very good. There's, there's potentially seven or more guys with, like, first-round grades. I've said this a few times, but I think there's a good chance that one of them will probably fall – and they'll probably just fall into the Raiders' lap. You could also see the Raiders potentially try and move up like a, a little bit higher in the second round to grab uh, that player if he starts to fall. So O-line defensive back, I really do think that's where they'll go. But I, I, I'd lean defensive back. I think a plus 150, that's still uh, a little bit of value because I think there's a better chance that uh, I just think it's a bit deeper once you get into the second round there. All right, guys, really excited to have you part of tomorrow's full mock draft of the first round here on The Sweat. It's all we're going to be talking about. Uh, I'll be joined by you two, six other different DK contributors making all 32 picks from the first round. So make sure everyone join us live 11 a.m. Eastern time tomorrow for a special, special edition of The Sweat. That will not include Jesse. Jesse.